Family Medicine in 5. Today we're going to talk about EKGs. It's a very important thing in family medicine and so I want to make sure you understand how to do it and why we would do it and kind of a basics of what it would look like when it's done. So when I talk to patients about the heart, I always equate the heart to a building. So a building has structure, has electricity, and it has plumbing. And so an EKG is a really good way to look at the electricity of the heart. It doesn't always tell us the other parts, you know, you need an echocardiogram or a cardiac cath, but when we want to look if a patient's having like an acute heart attack, an EKG is a great way to do it. Remember, an EKG is a very gross assessment. It's not specific. It's great in clinic to rule out things that are terrible, but if I really feel that the patient's having a heart attack, I'm not gonna use the EKG as my delineating factor. When I get an EKG, I literally get three beats of a bunch of areas of the heart. So it's a very, very small snapshot. So remember, the cardiomyocytes, so this heart cells, they have electricity, they want to beat. If you could dissect one little myocyte down and look at it under a microscope, it would have a throb, it would beat, it wants to beat. And that's why when we have an irregular rhythm in the heart, we can shock the heart and reset it. Now, it's not like on TV, if it's asystole, meaning there's no beat whatsoever, we can't get it restarted again. It has to have some kind of irregular rhythm to it, it has to have some rhythm. The heart has multiple sections that keep the beat going and they all have a fail safe. So as each section fails, the next one will catch in. And so the normal beats per minute is 60 to 100. If I have a patient that's beating at 45 and he's a marathon runner and he's super healthy, that's probably normal for him. But if I have a patient that's beating at 45 and he's sweating and he's having chest pain and he does not look good, then that's probably irregular and that's an emergency. So even though it's 60 to 100 is the average for adults, know that there's huge variation depending on the body and its health. I'm going to actually place an EKG today and show you how it's done. So the first thing you'll do is you'll have your patient change and they always open it up in the front. Remember the electrodes are across the front of the chest and then on all four limbs. Uh, what we do today I'll show you is a 10 lead EKG. They come in 12s, they come in 5s, it depends on on your institution what they're using but 10 is kind of the standard and so I need to access to the chest now this is my son and so of course he's a boy but when it's a woman you just want to be really careful about modesty so instead of having them just splayed all over oftentimes I'll have them go ahead and lay down mush I'll, as we put the leads on put your arms to your side as we put the leads on if it is a woman I always make sure I tuck the the breast within the uh, gown so they're not just laid all open like this so that's a little bit of modest modesty for the for the patient so first we're gonna put the leads on and so you're gonna find these little electrodes now if you take a few minutes to prepare the patient it will give a much better reading for the provider so the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure there's not a lot of hair of course my 15 year old son has very little hair so that's he's a perfect candidate um, but if there is a lot of hair you want to shave off the hair off of the chest first these have um, kind of a sticky back and so if there's a lot of hair it's not going to stick very well to the skin and so if the skin is really oily or there's a lot of lotion on it, you wanna clean that off as well. You don't wanna use alcohol because if the skin is really dry as well, it won't transmit the electricity very well. So um, think of like uh, when you're doing an ultrasound and you're using gel and that's transmitting it well, there's very little interruption between. And so it's the same thing if it's really dry then there's a lot of area for interruption. So sometimes if you can't get them to stick, you can actually use a little bit of gel as well. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find the fourth intercostal space. So you're going to walk down, intercostal remember is between the ribs, so you're going to walk down one, two, three, four, okay? And that's where the first lead goes, so V1. So I'm going to put one here, and then I'm going to put one on the opposite side over here, so this is two. Now you're going to use um, now what I do personally is I go over and I do six. So this is going to go swoop around the heart here and six should be along the axillary line. So on the middle of the side, sorry, tickle, tickle. Okay. You're going to do this one was going to be mid clavicle. So straight down through here. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. 
and then you have four limb leads. So you want to avoid, any time that you're doing an EKG, you want to avoid bony prominences, so like this bony part here, or really fatty areas. So you're gonna put one here, and one here, and then again on the ankles. Again, you wanna try and avoid the bony prominences, so like the medial malleolus, you don't wanna put it right on top of there. And some hairy legs here. We'll see if these can stick. Perfect. Okay. So now that's the setup for it. So now Porter doesn't have a lot of hair. He's not really greasy. There's not a lot of lotion on there. So you wanna make sure all of those things are set up before you actually do it. There is some data that if you can't get it to stick or the patient has really dry skin, you actually can kind of scratch the skin a little bit, see if you can get it a little rougher before you apply the lead. Remember, if there's any kind of movement in there, it's gonna mess up with the electricity that we're, we're picking up. Okay, so these are the leads that you're gonna attach. It's really important that you put them on the correct area. All of these leads will be labeled. So like you can see on here, this one says V4. This one says RL for right leg. So if I put the right leg on the left leg, then it's gonna show that the the heart is flipped or even something called situs inversus where the heart is on the left the right side instead of the left side so um, whenever you get an ekg and you're like oh this doesn't look quite right the first thing you need to do is you need to go back and say my my limb leads on the right legs so let's attach all of these each of these will have a little clip on them so you slide the electrode in through there and then you're going to close it shut okay so let me show you how it's done so this is right leg, okay? And so we're gonna slip this in and clip it down. Uh, let's see, left leg. So I'm gonna slip this into the hole and clip it down. Now it's attached, okay? Now if I can move this, so say I'm pulling on this and this electrode has a lot of movement, pull it off, get yourself a new electrode. It's better for you to waste a couple electrodes than for you to turn in a, a subpar EKG. So right arm. We'll slip, slip that right through the center and clip it down. Left arm and clip it down. So these next ones are the cardiac leads. So V6 is going to be right here. Four, two, five three, and one. Okay, awesome. So again, if you see movement, like it's, it's moving, then you need to um, pull, it off the, pull off the electrode, get a new one, because it's, it's got to stick really well to pick up the, the um, electricity. Okay. How our machine works here at the clinic is it has two parts. So you're gonna click this area together here. So this is just two. And then this has a USB that collects, connects to the computer. Okay, now you're ready to record your EKG. So you want your patient to be quiet and not talk. You wanna remove their cell phone. So something that has electrical um, current actually can interfere with the electricity that we're picking up, even like the light. So sometimes on an EKG, if you see there's a lot of feedback, you can try it again with the light off. Um, you wanna make sure that the patient is warm. So if they're shivering, that's going to actually uh, cause some, what we call artifacts, so some irregular movements on the EKG. So if they're cold, give them a warm blanket. You know, remember they're bare chested here, so get them covered. And then also if you see like a muscle shake, so like a muscle fasciculation. So if you see like that, that um, muscle is moving, then that's gonna also uh, interfere with it as well. So you wanna make sure they're relaxed and warm before we start. Okay, so after you hook that patient up, let it run for a minute. You know, you have these six areas of the heart that you're looking at, and then you have a rhythm strip on the bottom. And so you, sometimes you'll have a little beat that's irregular, sometimes you'll have um, a little blip the patient will move or turn or cough. 
don't try to catch it unless you know that it's something irregular. So I'll show you some pictures of something called the PAC, a, pre a premature ventricular or atrial contraction. And you do want to catch those because those are just irregular beats. But remember that everybody's heart goes a little bit faster, a little bit slower. And so as long as the heartbeat is consistent through the rhythm strip, then you're going to want to freeze this and give it to your provider.